Some of the steak, huh? Nope. No steak for you. <laughs> Are you still recording? You're not. That was. You can't record. No, stop. Hey everyone, I'm Greg Hudson, host of America's Best Restaurants, and we scour the country. We check out hidden gems and local favorites. Man, do we got one for you today. It's in Hammond, Indiana, which you think you haven't heard of, but it's just south of Chicago, right off of I-90. We found a classic old school steakhouse, still doing it the right way with the jumbo cocktail shrimp, thick cut pork chops, and of course, cowboy bone and ribeye. Oh, by the way, all cut in-house by the owner himself, Jim. Let's head on in to Freddy's Steakhouse. Oh man, this place is cool. Hey, what's going on, man? How you doing? Very well. Great to see you, Jim. How you doing? Man, this place, this is awesome. I feel like I'm like transported. I'm looking for Dean Martin or something. Where's where's Frank? This place is gorgeous, man. Yeah, thank you. Man, and you guys are, are doing all kinds of special things here as far as a steakhouse goes. Lots of great appetizers, a lot of classics, right? Classics. Man. Shrimp cocktail. Oh, see, that's one of my favorites. That is one of my absolute favorites. And, uh, hey, how are you? Whoa, whoa, hey. okay, what do we got here? A Saganaki. I'll see this. Dinner and a show, baby. That is what I'm talking about. That is really cool. So in Saganaki cheese, right? That's a, like a more firm Greek cheese, would right, you say? It's a Greek cheese. Beautiful. Oh, goodness. See, and again, this is just a classic, but you don't see you don't see things like this very often. No, you don't. You really don't, man. Fantastic. Well, let me grab some cutlery here and let this cool. We'll dig into this. Okay. And um, so when this goes through the dining room, mm -hmm. people must go crazy. They do. They do. They love it. Man. We're one of the few restaurants around that have it. Excellent. So you got great appetizers like this, and the, he's back again. I am. My man is back. Oh, you're killing me. Classic shrimp cocktail. You're killing me here, fellas. This is, man, let, let's, let's dig in here. I need you to help me out, though. All right. Can't do this all by myself. What are we going to have first, a shrimp cocktail or what's that next? Uh, let's grab that Saganaki, man, while it's still looking hot. What do you say? It sounds delicious to Ooh. me. Man, if you are a sucker for cheese like I am, a flaming Saganaki is fantastic. Again, it's one of those things that you just don't see. Look at that. That steam coming off, a little stringy. That's what you want. Look, oh, look at, mm, baby. Delicious. A little lemon taste to oh. it. Oh, mm. I love that. Thank you. It's I love my favorite part personally. The, the little crunchy edges. Yeah. The yeah. little you know you get a little texture on there, you, a little you, bit of you chew. You can ask for a well done. Oh, I, yeah. I mean I could see it. Hello. I could totally see it. I'm gonna get one more, more little bite here, and then we gotta try this shrimp, shrimp cocktail. cocktail. Again, for me, man, a shrimp cocktail is just a classic. You come to a steakhouse, an absolute classic. Mm -hmm. Look, I can't even keep this on the fork. It's just dripping. This is so great. Your jumbo shrimp. Mm. Well, that's what I was going to say. You know, you go to a steakhouse, you order a shrimp cocktail. This is what you want it to look like. And this thing's colossal. Look at this. The jumbo shrimp. Massive. Now, what's going on with this cocktail sauce? Are you a spicy guy? Yeah, a lot of horseradish? A, How do you do it's this? It's a horseradish cocktail sauce. A little spicy. Now, I'm, this, this is going to take two bites. I can't even do it one. Three. Mm. Oh, man. Delicious, huh? Another thing you can't buy at a chain restaurant. You, no, seriously. This is just so perfect. And what a great way to set the tone at like a steak dinner in a mm -hmm. place that looks like this in a classic shrimp cocktail. Mm. Historical. Mm. You got a great balance on that cocktail sauce too. Even if, you, even if you're not into spicy, you're gonna be fine with it. But it gives a nice kick with that horseradish. Well, mm. Look, I can't, I'm still, it takes like three or four bites. It's a baby lobster dish. It really is. Well, 
we got a lot we got to try today though right because you're not just doing steaks we, we're trying a few different things right, right all right we have some pork okay some pork you guys do a great pork chop here right some ribs beautiful and uh you were telling me before you're well it's called a pole boy but you got some great steak in that right. sandwich right it's a ribeye steak sandwich and you do a lot pretty well with that like we, people grabbing that for lunch you do a ton of lunch those. dinner carryouts uh we do about thirty-five thousand sandwiches a year are you hearing that? 35,000 of these pole boy. And they're ribeye. Then they're ribeye sandwiches. Rib right, we do we two, gotta try that. We do two sizes, a small and a large. We're just gonna show you the small ones. That's good. We got a lot to get to today, because so that's fine. The large one is like too large. Perfect. So we got the steak sandwich. I'm definitely excited to try that pork chop. But there's something you guys are kind of known for here. Your your signature dish. What we would do that a be? Signature bone in ribeye, which is called some people call it a cowboy steak. And we have it comes with Red pepper, green pepper, zucchini, squash, uh, asparagus on the side. It's a delicious Beautiful. Thing. Beautiful. Well, listen, I'm going to let Chef fire all that up, but if you wouldn't mind, man, I would love to take a look around and okay. just sort of absorb more of the history okay. and hear your story. Is that cool? Okay. All right, man. Let's take a look. All right. This is so cool. And I said it once, I'll say it again. I love the feel of this place. Great. Old school, traditional Great. steakhouse. Great. Hey, take me through the story of Freddy's though. I, like this has to have a ton of history. I, I want to get that story from you. We, we've been around about 60 years. I have owned it for 18 years. It's a landmark restaurant. Uh, a lot of politicians come here, local people. I just, I kind of look around and it's like, man, if these walls could talk. You gotta believe there's been a lot of Sopranos, Goodfellas. It, yeah. It's uh, <clears throat> old history steakhouse. Yeah, and it's just there. I can't even tell you how many deals must have gotten cut here over the years. A lot of deals. A lot of deals cut here, right, Jim? I say my customers either die or they go to jail. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that should be like the slogan because it, it feels that way. It really does feel that way. Um, so it's been it's been here. It's been a landmark for a while, but. Uh, why why come into a business like this why come into the restaurant business do you have a food background right i have a food background i was in food service i bought and sold traded meat uh, i started out cutting meat 45 years ago and ended up owning a restaurant man and you're being a little modest because steaks meat beef something you've been doing for a while 45 years oh Four hey brother Enjoy. Excellent. What's this, man? That's a poor boy steak sandwich. We make them out of uh, ribeye steak. Oh, uh, we baby. have a small and a large. That is a small. That's, that's the small. Because it looks like a rich boy. It doesn't look like a pole boy to me. That's a small. Well, wow. let's dive in here, man. Okay. And I, and I want to hear more about All the right. about your story and All right. this your is background. A small one. Uh, it started off by uh, Freddy's Steakhouse cutting their own meat years ago. And uh, they had some byproduct and some miscut steaks and they put it on a French roll. Uh, when I bought the place, we were selling so many of them, we had to cut them to order. We had to cut Man, these that's, steak sandwiches. What an, what an interesting way for a, a steak sandwich like this to start where, you know, like you said, you're yeah. cutting you're cutting steaks and there's a little trim here and there and you make a sandwich out of it. And, and it's, they like now it so we get much, this. it just grew and grew and grew. Let's get a bite of this, man. I'm gonna try this out. Mm. And this is a small one. Mm-mm. Mm. Can't beat it. That is fantastic. And that's ribeye, you said? Ribeye. Let me tell you what the key is, though. And a lot, you're doing something that is often overlooked. You season that perfectly. Right. If you don't season that, it doesn't taste that way. Right. It's a, I mean, you got a great cut of meat there. It's got some fat in there because it's a ribeye. Little garlic on there. Yeah. Salt, pepper. But that season, oh, I got a little garlic just now. And that cheese on there is perfect. I'm a big mushroom guy with steak. That's a mozzarella cheese with uh, mushrooms and grilled onions. Oh, look, yeah, you see, you can get the grilled onions in there. Check that out. It's the only way to buy it. Some people buy them plain, but. No, this is, this has all the fixings. Check this out. All right. Mmm. Thank you. I mean, it's fish bump. Come on, don't leave me hanging. We sell about 35,000 a year. Yeah, you do. How about? My goodness. So you clearly know your way around a cow, my friend. Yep. 
Take me through your background as a meat cutter. Well, I started cutting meat back in the 70s when there was like a recession going on and there wasn't a lot of jobs out there. So I got a job learning how to cut meat. I cut meat, went to management, went to sales, started selling restaurants and country clubs and hotels all over the area. Hmm. Uh, opened up my own business selling food as a food service uh, supplier and uh, back in 2005 I bought this restaurant and hmm. here I am and it, but it all instead happens. of selling steaks to restaurants I'm selling them to people yeah you're no longer the middleman I'm not I'm <laughs> <laughs> and but you man you're doing this the right way and here's what I think is is cool that you might not know this you're still cutting the steaks yourself I cut them all this myself. day the owner yep. is yep. here I'm cutting them every day, seven days a week. Man, it, it is, is it a passion for you? Is is meat cutting a passion for you? After because 45 it, years, it's not a passion anymore. It, now it's, it's it's like, it's not a passion, right. you're just really good right. at it. I, I gotta do it, you know? People come in here and they know what they're gonna expect and I gotta give it to them, you know? Yeah, well, I can, listen, I can tell you guys at home, if it's me, if I'm coming into a steakhouse, I have a lot of confidence if I know that the owner is there, the owner's cutting the steaks himself, and the owner has been cutting steaks for a long time and knows what he's doing. Do you wet age, dry age? What do we? We, uh, we dry age. No, wet age. We tried dry aging, but people seem to like the wet age a little bit better. Well, let's talk through that because some people don't know the difference. Okay. Like for you as a, as a pro, the authority on this, talk, what, why wet age over dry age or vice versa? What's a dry what's, what are the age goes in the cooler where it's just dry age with no vac pack. A uh, wet age is cryovac and it goes in the cooler. That's cryovac and a package with uh, the purge of the, 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 the animal. But mm -hmm. it, uh, it doesn't like dry up like a dry age. A dry age really dries up. Okay. And I, I like dry age myself, but some people don't like the taste of dry age meat. So gotcha. we went to the wet age, 30 to 45 days. Whoa. I take care of it. It's all dated. I bring it out. I cut it myself. Man. So, and so you're hand cutting everything. You everything are crying. You're, you're vac sealing it yourself. Right. right. You're watching it put in the way for 45 days. Right. And see, that's what I want you to kind of appreciate. When you're coming in here, you're coming to Freddy's, your steak started more than 45 days ago. And it's been waiting on you. Has been dry age, so think about that when you're sitting down taking that a bite of that steak that started almost two months ago, waiting to hit your plate, right? And that's what I love about what you're doing, man. That's what I love. You're taking the time and you're doing it yourself and you're doing it the right way, right? Every steak I cut individually myself. Well, this is great, man. The steak sandwich is great, but now I think it's time to get to the big boys. What else are we going to be trying here? We're going to try uh, pork back ribs, baby back ribs, and we're going to do our 14 ounce bone in pork chops, Frenched. That's great. Uh, we, I cut those myself over here too. <laughs> Jeez. It's a lot of work. They're special pork chops. We marinate them. People come here just for the pork chops. How many people go to a steakhouse to get a pork chop? Just for pork, right. But they, they like our pork chops. Well, guess what? We're at the steakhouse, we're at Freddy's, and we're here for the pork chop, and that's coming up next. We're back in the, I gotta tell you, man, I, I'm kind of living a, a movie buff's dream. I feel like I'm sitting in the corner at Goodfellas right now in that movie. This is just, this is really cool. This is what you think about with the old school steakhouse vibe. It's old man. school steakhouse. But here's what's interesting for all of you watching at home. Yes, it's Freddy's Steakhouse, but they're not just doing steaks. We're actually doing a whole course right here uh, of pork, I guess. Right, we're doing some marinated pork chops. They're French, 14 ounce. They come two to an order, and uh, we're gonna try them out right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and answer the question that all of you had, because I asked the same thing. Yes, when you order the pork chop, you really do get two of these. You get two pork chops. This is not just for the camera. This is not camera no, magic, right? No, that's 14 ounce pork chops, two pork chops for dinner. Ooh, daddy. And it comes with soup, salad, bread. Let's go, I don't wanna eat by myself, man. Oh. Let's dig in here. So these are two, what'd you say, 14 ounces? 14 ounces. And um, I cut it myself. That's what I'm talking about, man. You come to Freddy's, you get a guy that owns the place and still cutting the meat himself. 
And tell me uh, about this marinade. How long? What do you use? Uh, usually 24 hours. It, it's a secret. Uh, <laughs> house, house secret. I tried, everybody. I tried. It's a house secret. If you try them, you'll be back. <laughs> hmm. We have people that come for the pork chops on a regular basis. They just love our oh, pork chops. Oh, man. They're good, aren't they? Come on. Mm. You can't get these pork chops anyway. You really can't. You can. really can't. And I'll tell you right now, as someone who loves to cook myself, if you're watching, pork chop is very easy to dry out. I mean, it's it, it, the difference is seconds. I mean, if you just leave it on there just a little bit too long, it's going to dry out on They're you. They're good. This is fantastic. What else I love about this, which you guys have perfected, is the char. Because I mean, you can you can roast the pork chop, you but man, you're doing it back there on that on that grill, char grill. on that char grill, and you get that char, and you can really taste it. That's phenomenal. How many of these are you cut in a week, man? A couple hundred pork chops a week. A couple of hundred. That's pretty good for a steakhouse because we're known yeah. for our cowboys, our mm. ribeyes. We sell a lot of ribeyes here. Hmm. I can see why you're coming for the pork chop, though, if you're coming here for this. They're they're guaranteed to be tender. Yeah. They're delicious. It's fantastic. This is... I can, it should be pork chop house. It could be. I, I still can't get over that you get two whole pork chops like that. And you said when you come and order this, you're getting like soup and salad or something too, Apple right? Apple sauce, soup, salad, baked potato, french fries. We just didn't have room on the table because we wanted you to see all the good meat, but man, hot, that's incredible. Hot bread and honey butter. Fantastic. Let's get those, get some of those ribs, bro. Okay. This is the, I, you know, I've never felt this cool in my life. These sitting are, back in a booth like these this. These are our baby back ribs. And you guys are pretty proud of these too. We're pretty right? proud of those. Back ribs are delicious. Mm. Not a lot of people do back ribs anymore. Is there any secret to these as far as the sauce, the cook, anything? Uh, you're we doing? got homemade barbecue sauce. Oh baby, these are look look at this. This is how you know you got a good rib, ladies and gentlemen. We getting that? You see this? Clean off the bone. This is what you're looking for when you have ribs right there. I, I haven't even taken a bite yet, and I can already tell you this is gonna be a damn good rib. I don't know what I like more, the ribs or the pork chop. <laughs> well, I'm glad we have both. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, sir. Mmm. The cook on these, is this getting a little kiss from the grill too? Yeah, we put them so, on the grill too. I'm I'm, yeah, got a nice little kiss there. On yep. the this is fantastic. Yep. Some people come for the ribs just, you know, I mean. Mm. And we were chatting a little bit earlier. And, um, you know, there was a time where ribs were kind of a high-end dish. Right. A little less than the barbecue joints. Right. And it was more of... You know where I'm from in Cincinnati, there's a place there and they're all, again, it's a fancy rib place. And it feels like that's kind of a lost art anymore. Right. You're doing, you're bringing that with this. Ribs, pork chops, steaks, shrimp. Man. Oh, look, I mean, come on, those jumbo shrimp are ridiculous. Delicious. This, this is really, really cool. If you had to come back, what would you take? Well, <laughs> apparently, we're, apparently we're gonna be trying a steak soon, so I don't know, but right now, I couldn't tell you. I love both of these equally in different ways, man. I'm like making a mess, got stuff all over my face, I don't care. But yeah, there's just something about sitting in a high-end place like this with some fantastic ribs that it just harkens back, man. It's just a really cool feeling. Waiting You're doing for, it the right way. Waiting for the Sopranos to come in. <laughs> and that's what I love, this is so fun right now. Okay, I'm gonna take one more bite, but I know you've got something coming up that is kind of your signature, right? Yep, we got a signature 24 ounce bone-in cowboy. Comes with some grilled vegetables on the side. You said 24 ounce bone-in. Bone-in cowboy. Rib it's a cowboy ribeye. Rib or ribeye cowboy. I think I. that's probably gonna be my last bite if that thing's coming next. Okay, one more bite. But around the corner, you know what it is. It's the big bone-in ribeye. Bam. Thank you. Man, we are back in our Sopranos booth here, and I kind of feel like Tony himself because we've got this giant, massive steak sitting right in front of us, this ribeye. 
I, I love the full service too, the bread, the butter. Honey butter. Honey butter at that. Beautiful. This, again, it just feels so classic. Classic old time classic, steakhouse. Man. This Back is from the 70s. Yeah. Well, talk me through this, this steak because I, I'm guessing or I'm assuming you hand cut this yourself. This is a hand cut, bone in French ribeye. It's 24, maybe 26 ounces. Uh, we French back the bone a little bit. It's aged 45 days. Comes with grilled vegetables, zucchini, squash, peppers, asparagus. Man. And I love- The best around. Can I just tell you, you eat with your eyes first, right? Yeah, and I just love the presentation here. The steak looks gorgeous. The hatch marks are great on there, but you also got the grill marks on the veggies. Right. And that looks great. Real awesome vegetables. presentation. And again, let's go back into the wet, wet aging. So this was wet aged for wet 45 aged. days. At least 30, I'd say At 45. least 30, okay. Well, let's dig in. Where do we start? You're, you're the meat cutter. I, I like it all. I, I like the zucchini. I like the squash. I like the red peppers. I'm digging into the steak. I'm not worried about eating the veggies yet. These are, I'll have a bite of the veggies later so I feel better about myself. But let's dig into the steak, man. Take, take a piece off. Yeah, right back here. What am I looking for? What, what's the color? Like oh, pink. baby. Come on. Pink. You guys hold tight. Check this out. This is what you want to see when you're cutting into a steak. That steam coming off, it's dripping a little bit, but that color is precisely what you wanna see. Oh man. Add a piece of the end, a little char on there, it tastes delicious. Mmm. Oh, I got some crust. And mm. that's what I'm talking about. Well, one of life's rare jewels is a nice charred crust of beef or fat at the end of a steak. Mm -hmm. Man, that's delicious. How often do you are you cutting these on a daily basis? Uh, we individually cryovac our steaks, so I can cut them every two or three days on this item. Yeah, it's, it's even that. That's I mean, you're back there doing work, my friend. Every day, if we run out of them, I gotta cut more. Uh, Golly, that's wonderful. All right, I'm gonna try something off the cap here. I, I see a piece of fat, a fat that I like. You're a fat eater. Oh yeah. I know it's terrible, all you doctors out there. I don't want to see you commenting, but we gotta do it. We gotta do it the right way. So that end cap there, piece of fat. And that's what I love too about the ribeye in particular. Jim is the marbling that you get from, from a ribeye. So and tell people what, what the different cuts are as that's far as ribeye and a, that's, filet. That's a certified Angus piece of meat. Oh man. It's not choice. It's a little above choice. It's a good piece of meat, mm -hmm. aged right. Now you can't beat it. So what I love the most about a ribeye is what just happened, where you cut that ribeye and you get a little bubble of fat, and as you're chewing, it just explodes and a lot along of people, with the meat. A lot of people like the bone too, you know? Yeah, I, I, listen, it's this great. is This is another meal that's good for two. A hundred percent. I mean, one person to eat that, it's a bigger man than most, I would say that. This is great, man. So where can people find you guys online? We're at uh, Freddy Steakhouse on Facebook, or we're on freddysteakhouse.net, our website. And uh, if you need any information or a telephone number, you can call 219-844-1500. Or if you just need a really good steak and you're in Hammond, Indiana, which just outside of Chicago, not far, if you're on the highway, pop off, grab some of this. Mm. Man, top to bottom today. Delicious. Just dynamite. Just dynamite. Freddy's is an absolute classic. It is. I mean, I, I can't say enough. And if, again, this is one of those places, if I'm on the road and we're passing through even just pat, this is a destination. It's you're a stopping destination here for place. dinner. Right. If you're driving through, you're stopping here for dinner. So hopefully you do that. And I want to thank you for joining us, man. This has been a very special episode for me. Uh, and you know what to do, like, subscribe, share, but I want you to leave in the comments as well. What do you think about an old school steakhouse like this? What would you order? Because Jim, as you mentioned, you're not just doing steaks here. Right. Those pork, those pork dishes were outstanding. Right. Pork chop, the ribs. Seafood. Yeah. We didn't even see that. Well, the jumbo shrimp that we saw. So this is a classic. So when you come to a destination, an institution like Freddy's, 
what do you order? Do you go with the steak? Do you go with the ribs, the pork chop? I want to know. Leave that in the comment section. As always, I want to thank you for joining us. I'm Greg Hudson. We'll see you on the next episode of America's Best Restaurants. Man, thank gosh, you. that's good. Give him some of the steak, huh? Nope. No steak for you. <laughs>